Hi, welcome to Hook and Chat with Annie Garumi and our friends at Hobium Yarns. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Hook and Chat. We are in our sixth week, it's week six for it, and I decided to kind of move over to my dining table because I thought it would be a little bit easier for me to sit and have a tea, <laughs> actually. And today I'm having this um, Taiwanese tea. They have these little brown sugar cubes that have different kinds of like dried fruit in it. And then you just put those little cubes inside your cup and then you mix it up and it's really delicious. It's kind of like a brown sugar cube with some dried natural things. So that's what I'm having today. And I'm so excited to let you know, I'm going to show you a picture of the finished blanket that I made, the friendship blanket. It's the Tunisian Simple Stitch. And it's the one I've been working on for the past five to six weeks, about six weeks. And I'm happy to say that it's finished. So I'm going to show you over here a, a different video of what I, how it looks on, on my bed, but it measures 80 cm wide and 115 cm long. And it's been an absolute joy to be able to finish that up. And it only used four balls of yarn. Now I got six balls in each color um, not knowing what exact stitch that I was going to use. And because this basket weave one is taking up so much of my yarn and I'm already on my fifth, I'm finishing up my fifth ball. See here, this is the end of the fifth ball. And I just, I feel like I needed to make the Tunisian simple stitch one a bit smaller. So that way I have enough yarn to kind of even it out. I may need, I, after I've been doing the math, I think I need maybe like two more balls of yarn since I made the other blanket a lot smaller. But anyway, I'll cut to the video here now. So here is my full Tunisian simple stitch blanket. It is finished. I cannot believe it. It's gone by so fast. So what do you think? I think the video shows how how gorgeous those colors are and the mercerized cotton makes it even better because it's nice and shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started over here on my um, basket weave one and we can continue our hook and chat. So now we're in week six and I just can't believe um, how fast these weeks are flying by because it feels like the days are going slow but when I'm thinking about this is the sixth week that I'm doing this now it's just kind of crazy to me and it makes me really happy that um I don't know some of you have been there since the beginning and it makes me really happy so I may continue this series and I've gotten some some feedback and some people don't don't really like the stitch that I'm doing right now and that's okay I get it um get just giving it a try and this is the one that looks the best so far in this stitch and then my friend also really likes the, the way this looks and the texture of it so I'm very excited to um, give it a try. So since I'm finishing up my blankets and I'm probably going to be done here in probably in week seven so I was wondering if you wanted me to continue hook and chat. Um, I can make it into a regular series and also share with you some of my yarn purchases as well as you know I can keep keep working on the things that I'm working on. Um, I'm, I'll be working on a, on a short sleeve knit jumper for my son in the next project so if you're interested in me just working on my projects please let me know in the comment box below or if you're if you're good and you don't want any more hook and chat that's all right too you let me know so that I can kind of figure out what the general, general um, friend group wants, so it's no problem. So last week we were talking about um, how I am Korean and I grew up in America and how I feel that I'm kind of like stuck in the middle being Asian and being American, but to be honest, it's um, a wonderful feeling to be able to be both. And now I'm living in Hong Kong and it's been really great living here. Really love everything about living here. It's been really eye-opening and really wonderful for not only me and my son, but just to experience a new culture and 
see where my husband's family is from. So it's really, really great. I was thinking about some, some things to talk about in this week's episode and my friend, again, my friend Jamie, <laughs> suggested that I talk about cooking. So I cook a lot. I cook um, almost every meal. And generally I, I cook Korean food and Japanese food and just kind of basic pastas with sauces, basic pastas with like maybe I make chili and I put chili on the pasta or like a tomato sauce on the pasta, ba uh, basil pesto, things like that. But oftentimes it's very, um, very much um, Asian, Asian food that I make. I've been experimenting with some Hong Kong style cooking, which is really interesting because they have so many different kinds of foods here. And basically whatever you're in the mood for, there is food for that. So if you feel like eating, say like soup or soup noodle, they have that fried food, street food, dim sum, many, many different kinds of foods. And the grocery stores here um, in my neighborhood, well, not just my neighborhood, just every neighborhood, it, they have these instant microwavable dim sums and sometimes we eat those and it's really, really nice. And other times we, I make it from scratch. So recently I made a steam fish, which is a very, very classic Cantonese or Hong Kong dish, which is you take a whole, whole fish and you put it in a steamer or in our case, we use a big pot with um, a bit of water on the bottom. And then we have a steamer tray. We put the fish on a plate, like the whole fish, the, the fishmonger will scale and clean it up for you. But the, the actual fish bone, they'll leave it because um, they just take the guts out and scale it for you. And then um, in Cantonese cuisine for a steamed fish, you would take slices of ginger and scallion and you can stuff the fish with it or like put it on top as well. And then you steam the fish just like that. And then while that's steaming and when it's almost ready and it's all cooked, then in this other, a different pan, you put um, some very just mild, mild oil and you heat it up so that it's super, super, super hot. So, and then when it comes out of the steamer, you take the oil and you pour it all over the fish. And then it makes a crackling noise when the oil hits the fish and it's so, so delicious. And then they have a soy sauce that's specifically for seafood. And then you take that soy sauce and then you pour it all over and you can add fresh scallions and ginger if you want to garnish it. If I can find a picture of it, I'll insert it. But for those who don't like seeing a um, the fish head, I, I would suggest you to turn away right now and then I'll, you know, just wait a couple seconds. And so I'll insert the picture somewhere around here and it's, it's delicious and it's super healthy and it's kind of like a luxurious dish. But if you go to our wet markets, wet markets are these local markets that you can go to. If you go there, you can get a fresh fish, which is recommended over frozen. So I made that twice and the second time it was a lot better, but then I think, I don't know if it's fish or if it's lobster, but one of those days that I ate seafood, we had lobster as well because I, I wanted to try making it at home since the price wasn't too bad for a fresh lobster at our market. And I broke out in these kind of weird pigmented spots all over my neck and it happened twice. So then I told myself, you know what? I'm not, <laughs> like the moment I stopped, stopped eating it, um, I noticed it took about almost a week for it to go away. And they were not raised bumps, they were just these pigmented spots and then they went away and haven't been back since. So I'm trying to go back to my non-seafood um, diet. As I shouldn't really call it diet. I mean diet in the sense of what I eat on a daily basis because I'm quite sensitive to oysters. So of was it a few, yeah, a few years ago, I actually had um, oysters on my birthday. And then 
I ended up um, fainting. I fainted twice and then when I fainted I hit my head on the doorknob and then I fell onto like a really hard floor and then I broke my front teeth and some of the side teeth and um, I think because of that that pain I ended up fainting again and that was really scary for me and the in the you know later after I got my teeth teeth fixed and I mean thankfully where I, I still feel sensitivity in my teeth but um, thank goodness you know I'm okay and and I'm fine from it I can't I can't even imagine if it became worse but the doctor was telling me that sometimes you can develop a seafood allergy so um, <laughs> I didn't know that because I ate seafood um, with no problem until that point and so now I'm trying to keep seafood at bay a little bit and most of my regular food that I eat on a daily basis I don't eat, I don't usually eat much meat I, I try to keep it like a plant diet um, because it makes me feel good and it gives me more energy so you know so now I think not only am I allergic to oysters but now now I'm starting to think Maybe I'm allergic to oyster, uh, lobsters as well. So, yeah, that's the something new that's been happening the past past week and a half or so. And but you know it's okay because I I don't feel like I'm missing out or anything because I'm perfectly happy to eat other things. But it was just kind of nice to be able to make that at home since this, um, lobster is normally quite as expensive. But these days, Australian lobster in Hong Kong is is um, quite affordable if, if you make it at home I mean not not the restaurant obviously but uh, yeah so that's what's been going on with me <laughs> lately but uh, a lot of cooking stuff there what else do I make on a daily basis like I usually make Japanese curry and um, something called Hamburg I don't know if you're familiar with it if I can find a picture out I'll, I'll include both um, the Japanese curry and Hamburg and I also you know I make the same thing pretty much every week <laughs> so uh, I'll just explain what I make I usually make um, what else do I normally make I sometimes make omurice and omurice is this um, they took two words to put it together Om omur, omur is um, the omelette right so om omelette om omu right and then rice is rice so you we have this kind of like rice on the inside with an egg wrapped around it and then you can put ketchup on it so I make and my son and my husband both love that very very much so I have that I make that in my weekly rotation as well and the other night I made some um, thinly sliced pork belly and I put garlic sesame seeds, soy sauce, meadin, which is like a sweet rice wine, a sweet white rice vinegar, oh, anyway, and a little bit of sugar, green onions, sesame oil, and then I, that marinade, I poured it in after the pork belly was already cooked, and I had some parboiled, broccoli and green beans and then I fried it all together poured the sauce in and we ate it over rice and it was a big hit so it's kind of Korean inspired it's that that marinade sauce that I just told you is like a standard Korean sauce for like nearly everything uh, especially like dumplings or you know chicken things like that and so I pretty much put that marinade in on everything and it tastes so so good and that was um that was something new that I tried because we normally don't eat pork belly, but uh, we've been kind of craving it because we haven't had it in a long time. So I tried that. Sometimes I make simple soup noodles, um, Asian soup noodles. So, you know, I have maybe like udon or somen or some type of like Korean or Japanese or even Chinese noodles. Um, it can range from like udon is made of flour and sometimes I will also use noodles that are made of rice like my fun or fancy um, and they're super delicious super 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 delicious or I'll make a 
What else do I make? I can't, I can't even think. I just make basic stir fries usually. And if I feel adventurous, I will try different cuisine type foods where I find the recipes online. Uh, I also make, um, there's this pancake recipe that my, my son just loves so much and I made that for breakfast this morning, which I don't have a picture of it, but it was very fluffy and very delicious and it was a nice Sunday morning breakfast. Since pancakes take a little bit longer to prepare in the morning, I try to keep it on the weekends since my pan can only hold three pancakes, so I can only make three at a time. And yeah, if I can, if I can find the recipe, I'll try to include it in the description box below, or if you can find me on Instagram, I'll try to post it on Instagram somewhere so that you can, you can find it. And yeah, so as far as cooking wise, you know, sometimes I'm, I feel very inspired to cook and other times I just, I feel really tired, you know, like I'm like, oh, I just want to eat something else. And during the pandemic, I felt like, you know, a kind of this inspiration to try cooking more and I, it was going for a long time but then now that this pandemic has been more than a year in Hong Kong it's been I'm kind of burnt out <laughs> so we try to order some takeaway from places downstairs and try to support our local businesses and, and such so cooking wise you know that's been happening and other things that are that are going on is um, that the Lunar New Year is, is right around the corner and I was looking at some of my old pictures and I'll definitely insert a picture some, somewhere around here. I was looking up the animals that I've made for the Lunar New Year and I noticed that, um, I'll have to use another ball of yarn. This is my last one, this is my sixth ball of yarn. I noticed, I wanted to see how many animals have um, created for Lunar New Year's and you know I started making these before before I became a designer and before I was um, really active on Instagram and I had Instagram when it first came out which is kind of crazy when I think about it and I was looking through and I just recently posted and I'm only missing a couple there are let's see I have the rats and I have um, the ox obviously because this year is the ox and then after the ox is the tiger then I don't have a tiger and I have the rabbit which is after after the rabbit is I think it's the dragon then the snake which I don't have dragon snake I don't have and then what is it I cannot remember the order dragon snake Tiger, dragon, snake, and then after the snake, is it the monkey? I don't have a monkey either. Oh, it's a sheep, actually. I I have a sheep that I made for a friend many, many years ago. I think back in 2011. And then I also have a, let's see, I don't have a monkey. And then I have the, I wish I could remember the order. I should have prepared this better. Let me see, I have a drawing that, I made a drawing of all the, all the animals. So I have a rat, oh, don't, don't judge me based on this because this is just me do, like doodling. I have a rat, I have an ox, I don't have a tiger, I have a rabbit. These are kind of like dolls that I'm thinking about making in the future, but you know, don't don't judge it based on how it looks. Yes, I don't have a dragon. I don't have a snake. Don't have a horse. I do have a lamb that I made. That's the one that I made, or sorry, not lamb, sheep that I made for a friend's um, a friend's baby in 2011, which I don't think was a year of of the of the sheep, but. You know, I, I kind of coordinated it with that. And then I don't have a monkey. I, I, I have a rooster, I have a dog, and I have a pig. So there are some that I'm missing. And also, please, please don't judge my drawings and my painting. It was just, you know, idea time, brainstorming time, because I really want to come out with all 12 animals as a series for the Zodiac race. So that's something I'm thinking about. I think I need some tea. My throat is drying out. So I don't know if you can see, where's my camera? Oh, here it is. 
I don't know if you can see, but it's like a dark, um, dark brown tea, but it's mostly brown sugar and it has goji berries. And this one is like a red date and it has some other, other fruits. So let me have a drink real quick. Ah, that's much better. Yeah, these are, this is a really popular Taiwanese tea and my, um, my son's grandmother showed it to me and now I've been drinking it ever since and I love it. What else has been going on? Not much else has been going on to be honest. Not much else. Hold on a second, let me just check. Eh, sorry about that. I just had to make sure that um, <laughs> I had enough battery and I do. So I'm back again. Um, yeah, so these days, um, my son and I have been doodling a lot. We've been making our own comic comic books because he really loves Dave Pilkey and he loves that Treehouse series. And I'm not talking about the Magic Treehouse series. I'm talking about Andy Griffith's 13-story um, treehouse and, you know, they have a whole series going on. And they make their own stories, right, in those, in, in those books. So... So we've been busy, busy, busy making that. And um, because we've been so, or not we, because my son is really into that, uh, his grandparents bought him this crazy 136 color, <laughs> color pencil set, which is um, so generous and so crazy. I really did not know that there are so many different colors. Uh, I, you know, because I grew up with, I think like, six colors in my crayon box or six colors in my color pencil box but it's just um, absolutely amazing the amount of colors there are in this set and so it's been really fun and some of the some of the colors are even metallic so they have this sheen on them and like kind of glittery and it's very fancy so I feel like kids are so lucky these days have so many resources to be able to um, do whatever they want to be honest it's pretty amazing and um recently we've been going out for these little walks around our neighborhood during non-peak times when no one's around and um it's been really nice because i feel like i've been missing the sun so much because um we don't really go out all that much because of the covid cases so we're trying to stay safe and, <clears throat> but, you know, once a day we'll go out for like, you know, 30 or so minutes and walk around our neighborhood. But, um, around the time most people are either not at lunch yet or have finished lunch and gone back to work. It's been a nice time because the, the weather is absolutely gorgeous in Hong Kong right now. It's, um, not cold, not hot. It has a nice kind of, um crisp air but warm from the sun and so it's nice and sunny and you know I feel like we need some some type of activity so that we exercise a bit <laughs> so um we've been trying to make some time to go out every day to do that and we discovered that we went a bit you know like 10 minutes 10 minute outside of our immediate neighborhood and notice that things have changed a little bit so I feel like oof, it's been a long time since we've been out. <laughs> most of the schools are um, uh, back so most kids are back at school now but his school had a, um, a child with COVID so they closed it down for two weeks and uh, they go back. They go back uh, actually this week. So I really hope that everything is safe. It's really scary, the unknown of COVID. But I'm hoping that everybody just has good, good hand hygiene. And I mean, that's about all you can do, right? Um, just wear a mask and be careful. So yeah, as a mom, I feel a little bit nervous about that. I'm, I'm actually keeping him home to uh because it's only two days that they're going back so i figured yeah it's only two days two half days not even a full day so i told myself 
well, it's only two half days, so why not just keep him at home and maybe after the Chinese Chinese New Year holiday and usually people will go back to their families so I feel like there will be a spike in cases so maybe I'll just wait until after that spike is done and then he can go back to school so we'll see but it's definitely been hard on the kids not seeing their friends not playing together so I try to spend the time that we have at home to really play together actively so that way he has that play time even though you know I'm not I'm not his age obviously but so that he he feels happy and has joy and I try to play what he wants to play also so that way it's not just us um, obviously we read books and draw pictures but if there's like imaginative play or any kind of um, arts and craft activity that he feels like playing I'm very happy to do that so uh, we've been doing a lot of a lot of um, pretend play and he loves um, Mario and Yoshi and uh, oh as you know um, from previous episodes that you know, he was sharing with you that he was like making a book about it um, about strategy guide on how to play the game better but yeah I think um, I feel like you know he's very young but he seems to really enjoy making books he asks if um, I could find a way to print the books that he has and so that he could share it with his friends and I said yeah of course we can just copy them and staple them together <laughs> and maybe mail them out so we'll see maybe that's something that we can we can look forward to as well when he goes back to school he can kind of pass those out um, to his classmates yeah and then what else has been going on Back to um, cooking or food, uh, today I made my own yogurt. It's um, sitting away right now in a warm place. I just took um, some milk and I warmed it up before it boils, so like right when it starts getting very, very warm. And then I took it out and I put it in a big, big glass jar and then you add a couple spoonfuls of your favorite yogurt or the yogurt that you have from before. And then you just um, put it in a warm place until it sets up. So I'm waiting for it to set up so that we can start eating yogurt at home again because yogurt is crazy expensive here. I don't, I don't remember it being that expensive in America, but here for like regular, just regular plain old yo yogurt, those little cups, the single serving ones, they some of them can go up to like 60 Hong Kong dollars, which is like. Is that like eight US dollars? It's really expensive. So I I mean they have cheap ones here too, but the cheap ones don't really they don't really taste that good to be honest. They just they taste like candy. And even the plain yogurts are like too sour. And so the ones that we like are quite expensive. So I just took one that we like and just bought one little tiny tiny one and and I'm making it again. I used to make it all the time in the summertime, but then, you know, I just kind of forgot about it and then I lost my my starter. So yeah, I'm excited uh, to improve my gut bacteria. Normally in the summertime, it takes no time at all for it to set, but because it's uh, winter time here and it's just cooler, I mean, much cooler, not as cold as some some of uh, my friends over there that <laughs> in America, but or um, any anywhere even in Europe, Korea is much much cooler than it is here because there's snow, <laughs> but here there's no snow, and I'm able to wear a short sleeve um, here, and so it takes longer for it to set up, but it's no no big deal. Maybe about like twelve twelve hours to set, maybe maybe a little bit more. But in the summertime, it would set up in like six hours because it's so hot here and it's really creamy and yummy and not too sour when I make it at home. And the the milk is the big difference, right? Not only the yogurt, st the yogurt culture that you're putting into your milk, but the, the milk itself is so important. And the milk that uh, we use is this Japanese one that is Hokkaido milk, which is full fat, like super creamy. It almost feels like cream, to be honest. But the yogurt is so especially delicious 
so we always use that one and I, I also use that one for bread so I we have a bread maker where you just dump things in and it and it makes bread for you and I use that milk for that bread as well and it's delicious it's like really really delicious and what else has been going on not not very much friends to be honest not very much but I've been I've been doing really well since we've been going on those walks I'm in like it's been really lovely to be able to see the sun and for a while the sun wasn't coming out so it's a nice little treat for us to go out and we try to savor up the time that we have together and try to make the most of the day right we use um, most of our time in between classes to call family back at home and uh, you know to make sure that our family back at home feel feel connected and loved so we call the grandparents we call my my nieces and and so that way we're all able to keep in contact so we we call our nieces um, every Sunday which is Saturday their time and um, my son and his cousins will play <laughs> video games together but it's really cute because they're so active they're talking to each other the entire time giving each other tips and and whatnot and they also send each other emails during the week which is adorable and we usually call the grandparents um, every day we call during breakfast because I, I don't want them to oh my goodness I just realized I was supposed to do the opposite hold on one two three four yeah, I was supposed to do the opposite. Whoops, that's okay. That's why this is so easy to tell when you make a mistake. So, um, no big deal. Yeah, so we, we try to call as much as possible every day. And I think that we're making the most of the unfortunate situation because of the pandemic. So, um, this is time that we normally wouldn't have actually because he would be at school there's no way we would be able to call the grandparents every day like we do because the timing wouldn't work out and even with the cousins usually we will be out on a weekend during the day when it's super nice so we wouldn't be able to call them and then timing wouldn't work out as well so um very thankful that we are able to use the time that we have um from this unfortunate situation and turned it into something good and it it's really nice because I, I really miss really miss my family. <laughs> and I was thinking about whether or not I should maybe make maybe make a blanket for my nieces as well. And they have um, the only thing is that I mentioned before is that my my son and my husband are quite sensitive to wool yarns. So I and, and acrylic also. So I would maybe need to keep it cotton, but I wonder if cotton would not be warm enough because it's quite cold over there. But I guess during the summertime, it would be nice if it was cotton. It's just one more layering thing. So one of my nieces likes yellow. She loves the color yellow. So I, I'm thinking about some kind of a yellow type blanket. And my other niece, the younger one, she loves pink. And so I'm kind of brainstorming on what to do. So if any of you are interested in stitch tutorials, um, I can I can try to do that. Or I'm, I'm debating if I should make granny squares, you know, like in a kind of modern, fun um, kind of way. I used to make granny square um, blankets and they were quite lovely. And if I made it in like yellow and maybe put something in the middle like a flower or I don't know something so these are things I'm kind of brainstorming and not really sure what to do but granny squares would be amazing I think and my friend May the one that I'm making this these uh, for her kids she was telling me that there's this Korean drama that she was watching called startup and I don't know if any of you watch Korean dramas or not but uh, I haven't seen it yet but apparently there's a lot of crochet and a lot of knitted stuff in in that um, that series. So she was getting very, very excited about it. Oops, the door um, shut because it's, um, 
I have all the windows open, so it's like automatically shutting. But she was telling me she's very inspired by that. So I'm very tempted to watch that series. And yeah, I just, I, I've been wanting to kind of switch out our, our home, not switch out, sorry, to kind of add some personality to our home by adding crochet and knitting as well as maybe some of our basic clothing. So I would really like to be able to make some maybe cardigans or sweaters or t-shirts or things like that um, to kind of slowly have our slow fashion, right? Like better for the environment and something that I've made that can last a bit longer because the blanket that I made for, um, not this blanket, but the Tunisian simple stitch one. It was uh, so lovely. I, I put it around around my shoulders to see if it can wrap around me. And, and it matched my dress perfectly. And then I was thinking, gosh, this would make a great kind of cover up um, when I'm out because usually in the summertime, they blast the ACs everywhere. And it would be really nice um, putting it over your dress. So these are things that I think about. <laughs> I don't want to limit um, things to just being a wrap or just being a shawl. I like multi-purpose use because I feel like when I make a blanket that is square and it's not, I'm sorry, not square, um, rectangular, and it's not too thick, it works so great as like a blanket, you know, when you're on the bus and it's a long bus ride, you can just cover up your son or your, your daughter and you can also fold it up and use it as a pillow for them when they're lying down on you on the train. Uh, these are all things because, you know, and these are things that happen to me. And then you can also use it as a wrap if you're cold. You can use it as like, say you go to the park and you want to sit down on the grass, you could like put it on the grass and then lie down on it. So I really like multi-use because I feel like if you make, I don't know, if I made a specific wrap that had a button or you know like cardigan or something which i also love don't get me wrong i want to make those too but I, I like something that i can stick in my purse that i can take out and then just throw it in the washing machine so those are things that i'm i'm thinking about because uh, when we were going out before covid i always carried the green corner to corner blanket that i have and i would use it as all those things because sometimes my, my son would fall asleep on, on a long bus ride, like a 40 minute bus ride home. And I would just fold it up into a, like, you know, fold in half, fold in half until it became like a pillow size and I would put it on my lap and then he could lie down and put his head on it. And it was, it's more comfortable than just sitting on my lap or sitting on my, or lying down on my purse. So that was very lovely. For, for us and you know we often went to the park and stuff and we just wanted to sit in the grass and so I would put it down on the grass as well and then at the end of the day I would just throw it in the washing machine and just actually even the cotton every cotton blanket that I have I throw it in the <laughs> I throw it in the dryer as well and it's it's perfectly fine so those are some ideas and I think I think I need to go and hang out with my family. They're patiently waiting in the other room playing together and I'll just finish up my tea really quick. I'm really excited that this is going to probably be done in the next episode so I'm really excited to show you that. And um, let me have some tea before I close out. How are you doing? How are you doing friends? How, how is everything? Wherever you live, are you guys doing okay? I know America just got the the vaccines and many people have gotten it. So I'm thinking of all of you. And I hope that no matter where you are, that you're staying safe, happy, and healthy. And I hope that Hook and Chat has provided you with some friend time. And yeah, I just wanna say a big thank you to not only um, Hobium Yarns, but to all of you that are watching. Thank you so much. It's been It's been wonderful to be here every week with you and let me know if this is something that you want me to continue even if it's not a blanket and it's just me working on whatever projects that I have 
I really enjoy sharing with you and you can find me on all social media, um, especially Instagram because I'm, I'm not really active on Facebook or anything, but I do post. You can find me at Annie Garumi and I hope to see you next week. Take care everyone. Bye.